Hey there everyone, welcome back to All of Fabric 6. It's been a while, I know, I'm sorry about that. I've been a little bit swamped with other things, but you know how that goes. Anyway, today I want to knock out the other two of those Spectrum Ruins, if we can find them. That's kind of the priority, and if we've got any time left over, we'll see how we go with some other things. But before we go, a beautiful rainbow, but before we go running off in search of that elusive second ruin, we just need to set up a bit of a safe space to plant this very delicate jade vine bulb that we got at the end of last episode. Blah blah blah. It says they only grow one stage per night and only exposed to the way more soft indirect light of the moon. So sunlight will kill it, but moonlight will see it progress. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I was considering getting myself one of these. Never get the angle right. Thank you. That's a bit better. And then we'll glue all them together and get achievements. So what I was thinking was if we set up a, a system like this with a what's this called a mechanical piston and a gear shift that could like provide a roof to our jade bulb. <laughs> needed to be a sticky one and then say for instance we had the jade bulb here we could set this up so that at night time it's retracted and during the day it can get some shade in fact we can simulate that pretty quickly with a daylight sensor right so sun comes out roof gets put back on sun goes away at night time and the roof retracts exposing the delicious juicy jade bulb there but I had a bit of a test with this in creative and it didn't always, where are you? It didn't always seem to work. Like I think just a bit too much light was getting in still. Like maybe in between the time that it takes for the, the, the game of Minecraft to kind of say, hey, the sun's up and this thing to, to close, maybe light was leaking through or maybe the daylight sensor doesn't match up with um, the way in which the jade bulb mechanics work. Who knows? I'm sure someone does, but that someone isn't me. During a recent server tour, a video of which should be on the channel soon, or, you know, maybe it already is. Uh, yeah, I came across a few people's Spectrum builds and noticed that they use a kind of, for their jade bulb setups, that they're using a specific kind of glass that when, it's get, when it gets given a redstone signal, <laughs> when it gets given a redstone signal, uh, the glass becomes like transparent or solid or whatever. So, so that kind of sounds like to me like the proper way you're meant to do things. So... Let's have a quick read of the book and see if we can't find what it is we're looking for. Without redstone, it's completely solid. When a redstone signal reaches it, it becomes transparent, but it reaches a curious state when it's got full strength applied. All right, this seems to be the block. We don't have an awful lot of these radiating enders. We've got three of the things. Let's save one just in case. Get that craft going. Oh my god, that was pretty quick. That was quicker than expected, I guess, because we got these crafting accelerators set up there. All right. Okay. Looks good. Lever. Achievement. So now it's what? How do I get that back? That is awkward. Can items pass through there? They can. I can pass through there. I think that's just a block update thing, right? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Uh, what if it's not a full signal, though? Okay, a little bit transparent. Items can't pass through also. Well, thankfully, it looks like you power one and you power the whole block. But if it's not a full signal, it will... Go semi-transparent. Okay, good to know. Let's set this up somewhere in an existing chunk that's already been force-loaded, like this one. No point going anywhere else. To suss this out properly, I think, we need to have a quick look at... See that where it says client light over here? We've got two settings. We've got skylight and block light. Block light is impacted by things like light sources. Skylight is how exposed it is to the sky. So I think we want it to be exposed to the sky at night time, but not during the day. I'm not exactly sure if it has to be block light zero at the same time. 
But over here it's got nothing but sky above it. So yeah, let's just tuck it into, into this little bit here. Mining down wooden fences. Okay, let's give this thing its redstone and flip that. You're not a full signal? Let's, let's see how exposed that is to light now. This has given us 15 skylight. Cool. Right. <laughs> Before I plant our bulb, let's just see what happens when daytime strikes. Hopefully these things turn off. Probably speed the process up a little bit. Right. Did you turn off? You did not turn off. I think, I think this is a problem. Okay, so the sun is going down. And what do we want to know? We want to know two things. When this kicks in, so already, I think that's too much sunlight. It's kill shaders. I reckon that's actually probably a bit too much sun to start letting in any light. So let's just give it a little bit longer. So it would activate if the blocks were here. But the sun still looks up to me. How's the moon going? Oh, the stars are out. So let's say, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but let's say when the sun dips under the horizon, that will be when we let light in. And please, correct me if that's overkill. I just want to be real careful with spectrum. It's burnt me way too many times in the past. And sundown. So that's how much wire we need. Maybe. Ten. All right, we can do that. Okay. Um, why not? What a cool song that I probably I'm not sure on the <laughs> copyright status of it. So the sun's coming up now. Let's see. This this thing actually has been turned off for a while. Like, squeeze it down. Too big, am I? I tried to squeeze a little bit of redstone back here. So there's currently ten redstone pieces. It's not perfect, I can still see a little bit in there, but that's a nice reminder nonetheless. Okay, let's give this a try then. We'll plant our jade bulb. Like that. So I think we just kind of leave it for now and uh, head out and look for that elusive second ruin. And if all goes well, we'll plant these other jade bulbs when we get back. That's an interesting site. There's a budding emerald geode over there. But we are not currently facing any emerald problems. That's the Azua Daikon, which we've already been to. Alright. I shall do this for a bit longer and I'll let you know if I find anything. This looks like the bedrock one. I should probably go investigate though. This is another bedrock one. Okay. <laughs> Apparently I found like three or four of these things. It's the other ones that we're struggling to find. I'm not sure. Oh! I'm not sure why it kind of goes black like that. You know, the, the spyglass here doesn't seem to work the best. It's really dependent on what angle you look at things, I guess. There's something below us there, and I gotta get a look at it. Hopefully this is the elusive second one, because my god, I've discovered probably tw like 12 of these things so far. Mixed up. Mixed up. New chapters unlock. Item round... What? All right, I think it, this must be the second one. It reckons that I'm already inside there, I think. Oh, here we are, entrance. Nice, nice. <laughs> Not sure why we couldn't see it earlier, but this is it. Okay, it's also clear. In the end, you had it 
laid out all of all. <laughs> In the end, you had it laid all out already. What is this puzzle on about? You're, yeah. So, bit of color mixing. Brown is weird. Already watched that video. This is where we are. Sure, I'll take your treasure. Purple and lime. Could it be this? It's either pigments or saplings. Thinking we put either pigments or saplings on there, although that's like a picture of something else. Let's quickly head home, grab some saplings or whatever we need. Maybe now we can have a look what this round what this roundel thing is. A nice way to present your items. They hold up to six whole stacks. So you put things on there. Maybe it's needing full stacks of this stuff. Maybe it was also the saplings. So we'll grab a few lime and purple saplings and head back. Okay. Lime spore. Is that what you want? Possibly not. Maybe it's just a stack of each. Oh, they seem to max out at six. Okay. Lime to purple. Do you want me to make the blossoms? And two blossoms. Is this what you want? One of them? Or one of them? No, it's not. What do you want from me? Okay, this, maybe this is it. Lime green is light blue and two yellow. Lime is blue and two yellows. Lime, blue, two yellows. Purple is two blue, three pink, and one yellow. Oh, wish the Lord would take me. Let's try it all with a light blue. Let's try it with just regular old blue. Nada. All right, let's try it with cyan then. <laughs> ah. Controller, activate. You a hint? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. How'd you spawn on this? Pink. So it tells me quite clearly that color mixing is the key. You had it laid out already. Oh, they color pow. Oh, they're powders. Look at that. It's a powder. How could I be so silly? It's dust. It's this stuff that we power the... <laughs> it's the stuff that we power this crafting thing with. So... I'll grab some of them. Grab some onyx as well, just in case. Okay. This is it. Definitely. <sighs> I can't believe I'm so silly. Alright. Yeah, we got there in the end. That's what matters. More puzzles, huh? <sighs> Chest, chest, and a chest. This guy has a bunch. Spell, spell haste five sounds pretty cool. And just some other ones. All right. Oh, a crop. Oh, I think this is the stuff that actually gave us that achievement. Amaranth. Though seemingly left behind for quite some time now, these seeds still look very much alive. You wonder what comes of it when grown. What the? Why are you playing games with me? Gray and brown. Well, brown's easy enough. Brown is two blacks, two yellows, and a magenta. What have you got for us in store? Gilded book? Okay, nothing too much. But any treasure is good treasure. And gray. Gray. Like I figure white might be like this. All three of the regulars. And then you add a black to it to become gray. No. 
Where's grey in colour mixing? Alright, I just did a quick Google search and it says that it might be 50% is black. Okay, I've been led on a bit of a wild goose chase. Uh, turns out we can't actually get behind this door just yet because you can't get grey or white uh, in survival yet. They're, they're not available, can't mix them. And this is a way to like, there's something in that chest back there that's going to become available in the next update. And the, according to the Discord, it's like by locking it behind this puzzle, it means you don't have to regen your whole world to make those items available. So we'll definitely come back here. We'll call it something like grey puzzle. So we'll come back here and get whatever's in that chest once we uh, once the new update comes out. All right. With that done, let's quickly head back home. Have a look at our progress down here. <gasps> it's alive. I right click it. Oh my god. Just double check that I'm recording this. Yep. <laughs> Just have to double check that I was recording. Oh, what did we get out of that? We got jade petals. Jade petals, shiny petals when you plucked carefully when partly grown, these petals can be used as decoration, blah, blah, blah. And it looks like they're also used to make gilded books. You can use them to make restoration tea. We'll make some jade wine later as well, once we have like a, a bunch of these. Look, I'm fairly confident that that isn't going to die. Fairly certain I made three of them, but whatever. This thing seems to be holding up well, protecting... The bulbs in there from the sunlight. Okay, and this guy. Well, we got we got three of them. Maybe you can just plant this anywhere. So let's get ourselves a hoe. Just try for here. <laughs> uh, honey pastries, new chapters, scones. While we're here, we may as well get a whole bunch, right? You've never seen anything like it. Such an intense red, so expressive. These bushels can be created, can be crushed to get more grains. They can also be planted decoratively on grass or in a flower pot. And we can use the grains to make honey pastries. Ooh, some really good meals. Right, well, that is going to be, like I'm going to get into cooking in a couple of episodes probably. Right, and there was something else that it made up here. No, not that stuff. This stuff made memory for an egg laying woolly pig. <gasps> oh, but you need a head for that. And where do you get the head? Oh, we have the head. Do we? <laughs> we have. Surely we have the head. I guess we didn't do this yet. All right, let's get ourselves a couple of heads. So one of each of the animal heads, half a stack of vegetal and midnight solution bucket. Grants us. Scared me. <laughs> All right, there is our egg lane woolly pig head. Skip to the end. Wait a minute. That's the thumbnail right there, I think. <laughs> All right, with two heads, let's go test this out. Over here. Oh, there it is. See, I knew I made another one. And I'm so glad that little contraption in there is working. Because at least from what I could tell playing around in creative, they die pretty quick. What are you kind, sir? An amaranth bushel and some vegetal. So that's vegetal in the middle. Do your little piggy head on the side. No. Not grains, bushel. Um, this one. And we'll take our memory, do that again. Totally didn't mean to put the memory down here. So <laughs> let's fence it in so nothing can go wrong. There we go. And let's see, can I tick accelerate this? 
All right, it does say placing them on top of certain blocks seems to speed up their process or stop it entirely. I don't know what kind of block that would be. I mean, I've got a suspicion that it's like a magma block because that might warm the egg up. But I also don't want to take any risks. <laughs> I, might, I might kill the, the thing when it spawns in. So what I want to do is, I think, give this some time to hatch. I doubt it's going to despawn like the last time we tried with the, the zombie memory that I think just despawned because we were too far away from it. Either way, this is a passive mob. This isn't going to despawn. So I'm probably going to get up, just come chill in the house somewhere. Stole a couple of window panes. <laughs> and I'll go get a start on dinner. And we can watch this thing spawn in with a bit of a time lapse, I guess. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, it took a bit of trial and error, but I found out what these guys like to eat. And you know, it makes sense. They like this amaranth bushel stuff. Uh, so I just got a feeding trough set up there with some hoppers and yeah, and this stuff was super easy to get. Unfortunately, you can't grow it in a hopper botany pot, but you can just bone mill the thing. And I'm sure if we wanted to, we could automate this later on as well, which we'll probably have to do once we start getting into, um, into the agriculture quests. Uh, yeah, this feeding trough seems to be the best one because you see it says auto feeds nearby animals who are ready to mate Whereas I think this other one maybe it just feeds them no matter what The slight recollection that that's what happens anyway, so they're here just breeding up and I discovered a few Cool things about these guys the starters. I mean, it's in the name right egg laying woolly pigs So that as you can see they do drop eggs. So just got a black hole chest there to collect them They are woolly so you can shear them and you can even milk them. <laughs> and finally, in their name, if I can just get one of these in isolation. They drop pork chops. That's the pig part. So they seem to be all the animals wrapped up into one. So I got rid of the rest of them, as you can tell. Let's see. Now that seemed to open up a few things like drinking. I think that's the tea. Yeah, that's drinking this restoration tea, which we may as well go make now. But it also opened up a new advancement for what looks like a different kind of memory, a darker shade of memory. And this thing called World's Best Moonshine, which comes from the jade plant itself. I thought I was sneaky. When you punch these things, they drop the bulb again. And I thought I could replant them, but no, it actually kills the original, which is a shame. So I still don't know how to propagate them. Oh, so it seems like oh, they have a rare chance to propagate. Do they? Yeah, that one just gave me a new jade bulb. That's cool. And the book tells us that after many nights on a full moon, which is why I've been carrying around this, this crescent clock with me, just to make sure we're not going to miss out. On a full moon, you come and you collect the nectar with a glass bottle, and that'll give you stuff. So that's obviously what this next quest here is. Glass bottle, petals, and cocoa beans. Let's see. This will craft up the restoration tea. Which cures all your negative status and makes you immune for a full minute. Could have sworn that would give me this. Okay. Oh, the heathen. Well, nothing is more heathen-y than putting milk in your tea. So I'm guessing that's what this is. Because, yeah, we already saw in REI that there's a, a potion recipe here that includes a bit of milk. So, tea with milk, I think should give us the heathen <laughs> quest. <laughs> That's a dead end. World's best moonshine, we have to keep waiting until we get to a uh, full moon. And that'll open up something else. And then, just finally, this slack again quest. Alright, so these are all the memories that we can see. But of course, there's some missing ones. That might be it with a skeleton. It was a dark shaded one. Yeah, or it could be what's in here. Dragon head even. And it looks like according to the compass here that we're going to have a full moon tonight. So let's let uh, let's let this stuff do its magic. Because I've been avoiding our factory for such a long time now. 
I think it's just super intimidating what the next steps are. Uh, I actually made a pretty silly mistake here a few episodes ago when I laid out all these electric machines, was that I put in a bunch of MV steam turbines, so that's putting out MV power, or medium voltage power, on the Electrum cables, and I thought these guys here, these just regular electric machines, could only accept low voltage cables, so I had them... So I had the MV stuff coming into transformers and then the transformers would split out to, to feed. I thought I was being pretty smart. <laughs> it turns out uh, that's completely unnecessary because you can upgrade these things and upgrades to increase max processing, change machine hull to connect higher tier cables. It turns out you can... Oh, somehow I just undressed. Don't know how that happened. I was just double clicking a bit too ferociously, I think. All right, well, never mind that. Uh, it turns out you just had machine upgrade hulls. Yeah, we got 13 advanced machine hulls. Yeah, you literally just slide it in there. And they don't stack. Okay, so maybe later on I'll have to do a bit of a redesign where I take out these guys and just put a machine hull in each, <laughs> in each machine. But the thing that's mostly been keeping us back from advancing with MI has been our ridiculous kind of inefficient storage and um, its integration into our ME network. So what I was thinking I'll do is I'm going to have a kind of a mixture of configurable chests and uh, barrels, something bigger than the, than the bronze barrels, uh, stacked up here to this ceiling that interacts both with MI through cabling here into the back and is hooked up to a storage bus going into our quantum ring so that we can see all these items when we open up our, our ME here. So that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, I've done quite a few updates to the MI factory, but we'll get to all of them in a minute. Uh, the first things first, we, we ran out of steam along the way. Yeah, we're going well now. So I just threw down a few more advanced, um, advanced large steam boilers, nothing special there, but we did have to start burning coal dust because the lignite stuff, the lignite just ran out. I also upgraded these from LV to MV just because that was stalling. Once they were overclocking, they were just stalling a little bit, so no problem there now. They're all running pretty smooth. And with that extra power, yeah, that's now feeding these all these electric machines, which, as you can see, the texture is a little bit different. I've upgraded them to the, uh, I don't know what you're supposed to call it, the advanced variant of it, just by adding in these advanced machine hulls. And what that does is it means it can take MV power directly without needing uh, to be transferred. So I just came through here. Knocked out all the MV to LV transformers that you might remember were in there. Uh, yeah, that's completely unnecessary. That said, this stuff isn't cheap. It takes quite a lot of aluminium and a bit of silicon to make each one. And you just kind of come along to the machine, right click it. And yeah, now it's MV ready. So I did that for this whole row down here. Uh, burnt through my entire aluminium stockpile. So we're yet to do it to the, to the second floor. And I like it because it means there's less kind of colored cables all around the place. And... Just looks a little bit neater. But obviously the big change down here now is you see we got the start of a storage wall, hopefully a sensible one. There's a few principles kind of guiding what I did here. Firstly, we've got all the dusts. These quarries keep on outputting items pretty fast. So this is just constant. And this is obviously just from the one drill. And this comes in and if you don't process all that stuff properly or quickly, everything's just going to back up. So the goal is to make sure that those quarries can always output, but rather than storing the, uh, the, the ore itself, I chose to store the dust. So that means whatever iron we produce will quickly get eaten up here, get made into iron dust, and that can get used down here to make rods and, and bolts and rings and that kind of stuff. But any excess will come and get stored up there. As you can see, we're actually empty. So that's, that's good. This isn't like these things here aren't for us to store to get our hands on. They're just like a nice big buffer. And it's also a wall where we can come and we can see, hey, a lot of lapis there. We might want to start finding a use for that so that um, these barrels don't fill up. Similarly with the redstone, should probably start using it. Um, so that's one kind of design priority. Full moon. I've been waiting for a full moon. Be right back. Does the guidebook mention something about a full moon for these things? There it is. Okay, on a full moon, you right-click them with a bottle and you get something called Moonstruck Nectar. Restorative properties allowing repaired. Can be drunk for short. All right. And it can also be used to make budding onyx. That's cool. 
requires midnight aberration, which is not easy to get our hands on. That's the stuff that disappears like within a second uh, once you got it in your hands. Out of the sea. One time protection from death. It's dead fast. And steadfast means your tools won't burn up in lava or, or whatever. Or I guess get destroyed when thrown on cactus and things like that. All right, that's pretty neat. Good to know, good to know. Okay, so yeah, what was I saying? Uh, the first design principle is, yeah, clear out the quarries as quick as you can. And yeah, there's space for growth. So this is kind of the wall of barrels that is just for MI to access. Over here is a wall of barrels and config chests with a whole bunch of things in there, which is for me to access through my ME terminal. So if I want something like plates or ingots or netherite ingots, etc., 327, 327. That's just accessible through here. And that's the same kind of thing. We've got barrels and config chests with their slots locked. So nothing else can kind of come in here but the items that I want. Yeah, with the in or out blacklist rule on the pipes. And each of these is connected to a storage bus with a bit of fancy channel management. We've got, it's eight high. So we've got 16 coming here into this pipe. 16. 16 on that pipe. And they kind of connect right here in the middle, they made a P2P tunnel, and that's just going into our quantum ring, back connecting to our, our main ME terminal back there at home base. Uh, what else? Yeah, the third reason for a big wall here, uh, a little bit down the line, we're going to need to have thousands and thousands of transistors so that we can make thousands and thousands of these analog circuits in order to make electronic circuits, in order to make digital circuits and, and large motors, etc. So it's not a bad idea to start making them now, so production won't stall down the line when we need it. At least that's the thinking. I'm not sure I've done this correctly, but it seems to make sense to me. And I guess time will tell whether or not we've made any boo-boos. Uh, but for now, what I want to do is take our factory here to the next step in the process, which is, if we just have a quick look at the guide here, we've done everything up until this point. We're right in the middle of mid-game. There is drilling for oil, but I don't want to get into that just yet. We've got chemical reactor, vacuum freezer, centrifuge, and electrolyzer. The chemical reactor is for uh, many, many things, but we haven't really got into playing with liquids yet. Uh, we haven't got a good source of sodium, or really a good source of sulfur even at this point. Um, yeah, so it's not that. So I think that's kind of like the next, next step. Vacuum freezer is to freeze all these items that we haven't yet got. I think much more immediate for our needs us would be the centrifuge, which gives you carbon dust, which gives you a much better recipe for steel and silicon. That sounds good. That'll resolve our silicon issues. And also the electrolyzer, which is, which gives us a better recipe for aluminium. So 10 bauxite dust will give you four aluminium dust. You can also get aluminium from emerald dust or, or lapis, which we have no shortage of. 22,000 lapis. So that'll probably be a good use of that. And yeah, this, even though it's slow, this 10 to 4 is way better than the other recipe we had. Yeah, here it is. This is what we're currently doing with an EBF. We're taking nine dust of bauxite and getting one ingot. So that's a nine to one ratio as opposed to the electrolyzer one, which is a 10 to 4. Way better. So yeah, just to repeat, the electrolyzer and the centrifuge will help us really increase our silicon production and our, um, our aluminium dust, which we need in much bigger quantities if we're going to head into the electric age proper. So let's get ourselves set up with some assemblers making electrolyzers. And this one will be making us centrifuges. Lock the rest. Again, we don't need a lot. Let's just have eight in stock. All right. One electrolyzer and... And our centrifuge. That any real sense of where to put them? So let's uh, let's fix our aluminium production first off. We can get that with with either the electrolyzer or the centrifuge. And I think we may as well do the bauxite recipe for now. Um, perhaps by the end we'll have all these recipes going. Okay, we've got some power coming in here, and we need to. Let in the bauxite. So that'll give us our aluminium dust. 
which we can now slot in here. And you're going to head down to an EPF now. All right. So we've got to remove the bauxite recipe. And you're now taking aluminium dust. Cool. All right. But we also need to find some way to get rid of this titanium tiny dust or else it'll clog up the output. Um, it literally has no, no purpose other than to become titanium dust. All right. So let's get ourselves a packer. We'll have the electrolyzer automatically outputting upwards, but it'll only be getting rid of the titanium dust because that's all that can fit in here. So auto eject, upgrade that machine hull, give it some power and connect it to the system. And that'll be given us titanium dust. Which we can set up down here somewhere, raw titanium. All right, what's another way? Let's get it from Emerald because we got so damn much of the stuff. That's this one. Overclock one. Oh, that doesn't even overclock. You can't overclock this. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, we'll need to find a, a slot for the Berinibulimium. Okay, now we've got two sources of aluminium coming in and a source of silicon dust. So we'll start to see that backlog. And with the centrifuges, we could, and that's quite handy. We'll probably get, we'll probably do all these recipes at some point, although not all 189, because all these things are just to make uh, plant oil, which I don't know what that's for, but that's just all the vegetation. But at least for now, we can get coal into carbon and ruby into more aluminium. You're going to be making carbon, and you're going to be making, taking ruby in. We can set these recipes up here on the wall. And now quartz and carbon in this EBF, instead of quartz and coke, uh, will give us double the output. Two silicon instead of one. Uh, okay. And we can also now get rid of steel from uncooked steel dust and instead get it from this guy. One carbon and four iron dust. Like so. All right, let's see how we're doing now. We've got uh, no storage. Quartz is starting to back up, which is nice. I just moved uh, nether quartz and redstone up here so that the ME can see them. Uh, and yeah, there's no need to see quartz dust. And yeah, from what I can tell, from what I can tell, uh, yeah, the production on this stuff does stall if it can't output. Like here, for instance, it can't output the oxygen. The next iteration will give us 3,000 millibuckets. It's got nowhere to store the extra oxygen, so it stalls. So sadly, this thing is necessary. And that'll kick this back into gear once it drains. Yeah, which is a real shame. But we can get these things set up at a later date to actually store the oxygen and use it. Yep, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, so we seem to be getting a decent amount of like silicon coming in. Not quite constant, but much quicker than before. And aluminium. It's coming through. So yeah, it's probably about time to just let this stuff sit and relax and <laughs> accumulate over time. And then to kind of see where the bottlenecks are. All right, just quickly before we go, I do want to, like earlier on you'll recall, we unlocked this recipe. But in Onyx, which is a Midnight's Aberration, Block of Onyx, and some of that Moonstruck Nectar that we got from the um, from right-clicking on those Jade Vines. Well, I reckon it's about time we tried to actually capture some of this Midnight Aberration. And I'm thinking we could possibly do it with a Dank. If we set the Dank to pick up Void, pick up None, pick up All. Yeah, now everything we drop should appear in this Dank, right? Let's just test that. If we're going to drop something like, let's drop this hull. We'll drop it. It'll get sucked up and instantly go into there. Hopefully that's quick enough to not turn into, uh, not for, for the aberration, not to turn into gunpowder like it did last time. All right, let's see how that goes. One of each of the shards, a neolith, and a bucket of liquid crystal. This guy should suck it right up. Let's see. It's a 
any fires. <laughs> cool, it landed right in there. That's amazing. Let's not touch it. We'll clean up the mess while we're here. And let's go just feed it directly into our ME system and hope for the best. Right, let's do that again because <laughs> I accidentally forgot to record that last time, so... And then I'll show you what I did here. So Moonstruck Nectar over here. We'll get three Onyx blocks. We're going to put them in the middle. And over here, we just had a dock. We put our bank in there. Set it to accept Midnight Aberration only. So only Midnight Aberration will get sucked out of there. That'll get deposited on top. And then... I'm certain I'm recording now at least. There's another one. Ah, oh, it's cool that you can set these up for multiple crafts. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. And we can put them just kind of around the place here. And our crystal apothecary will mine it for us just whenever it's free. So how about like this? Just there, there. I don't think it really matters where we put it. I just want to make sure that there's space on all sides for it to uh, for it for the little shards to grow. I'm sure these two are clashing, but who really cares? Cool. Now we have automatic onyx collection, so we no longer have to do it the difficult way. We've just got it being produced passively here by these buds. All right, excellent. Really glad with today's progress. As you can see there from all those blue lights, I think clearing up the MI stuff really, really helped clear up our network drives over here. I think next time what we're going to do is we'll push just a little bit more with MI. Maybe I'll get the walls up around the base. But we've got to start working towards some of these challenges to get towards the end game. And to do that, you need to kill the Ender Dragon first. So we haven't got too much more to go now with Spectrum. There's this thing here, the Ruin. I'm a bit nervous to try out any more of these experiments. Like when I hover over these things, nothing else kind of comes out of it, except you see this one that opens up some new passage there to the right. These are all dead ends. So we've got all those now. It looks like we've basically almost finished with Spectrum, which you love to see. But something I do want to do, which the advancements reminded me of, was to go get the Ender Dragon head. We've been waiting for that in order to start, uh, start playing with heads proper. And then maybe we can have a bit more fun with memories. And then maybe we'll be able to figure out what that elusive memory is in the quest. It's like, again, I suspect it's something like the Wither, perhaps even the Ender Dragon. We'll see. We shall see. All right, so next episode, we'll go get the Dragon head. We can check out the end while we're there. It'll be our first time up there. All right, quest collection for today. Biscuit of totality. All right, sure, nothing really exciting other than that. Oh, I'm getting advancements here. Yum, yum. All right, well, that's the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.